Creationism. Creationism is a religious belief that the universe, earth, life, nature, and humans originated from supernatural acts of divine creation. Many people assume that creationism is a Christian concept. However, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, and most other religions have their own interpretations of creationism. One major disagreement that divides creationists is whether or not creationism complements other scientific explanations, like evolution, or rejects them completely and offers a different perspective instead. One form of Christian creationism that has been increasingly popular since the 1970s is Young Earth Creationism, which believes that God created the Earth 10,000 years ago, only slightly after he created the universe, and that the book of Genesis from the Bible should be taken literally and not treated as fiction or exaggeration. Old Earth creationism challenges this view by stating that the book of Genesis should be taken figuratively, not literally, and that the Earth and the universe are much older than 10,000 years, typically agreeing with the scientific ages. As of 2006, most Christians around the world accepted evolution as the most likely explanation for the origins of species. Many Christian leaders and scholars from mainstream churches, such as the Angelicans and Lutherans, don't consider there to be any conflict between the spiritual meaning of creation and the science of evolution. In fact, the former Catholic Archbishop of Canterbury argued that because Christians believe that everything depends on the creative act of God, evolution is totally compatible with Christian thinking. That being said, there are still plenty of Christian denominations where the majority disagree with evolution, such as evangelical Protestants, where 70% disagree, and Mormons, where 76% disagree, and especially Jehovah's Witnesses, where 90% of them disagree with the theory of evolution. Islam views creationism very differently than Christians, stating that the book of Genesis is a corrupted version of God's message. The creation myths in the Quran are vague and allow for a wider range of interpretations. The Boston Globe states that, quote, without a book of Genesis to account for, Muslim creationists have little interest in proving the age of Earth, whether it is a thousand years old or billions of years old, nor do they show much interest in the concept of dinosaurs. The idea that animals might evolve into other animals also tends to be less controversial, in part because there are passages of the Quran that seem to support it, but the issue of whether human beings are the product of evolution is just as fraught among Muslims. Khalid Anis, president of Islamic Society of Britain, argues that Muslims do not agree that one species can develop into another, showing that even with Islam, there are varying responses to the theory of evolution. Hindu creationists claim that species of plants and animals are material forms adopted by pure consciousness, which live in an endless cycle of births and rebirths. Hindu creationism is a form of old earth creationism, and these views are based on the Vedas, a large body of religious texts originating from ancient India. Historian Ronald Numbers says that, quote, Hindu creationists have insisted on the antiquity of humans, who they believe appeared fully formed as long as trillions of years ago. Catastrophism. The evolutionary theory of catastrophism, proposed in the early 19th century by Georges Cuvier, was the start of a radical change in thought regarding the previously popular and unanimously accepted idea of the time, fixism. Fixism suggested that the Earth's surface features, its organisms, and species were relatively stable and unchanged over long periods of time, basically saying that nothing major has ever happened to Earth. The theory of catastrophism offered a different idea by looking at fossil evidence and arguing that Earth's history was majorly affected by sudden and traumatic catastrophes, such as floods, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions, and that these events caused widespread destruction of life forms and led to the extinction of numerous species. Catastrophism did not believe in the concept of evolution and the sense of the gradual transformation of a species over time. Rather, it instead believed in a concept called successive creations, the idea that catastrophic events led to the creation of an entirely new species that has adapted to a changed environment. Catastrophism noted that the fossilized remains and different layers were distinct from one another, suggesting a sequence of natural geological periods. While the evolutionary theory of catastrophism eventually gave way to modern scientific explanations of many of these concepts, the contributions of catastrophism were crucial in refining the discourse around the dynamic nature of Earth's history and the role of catastrophic events in shaping life on our planet. Lamarckism Lamarckism is not currently accepted, however it was the first theory that spoke about the concept of evolution. Also known as the theory of transformation or the theory of inheritance, it is the notion that an organism can pass on physical characteristics to its offspring that the parent organism acquired through use or disuse during its lifetime. Now if that sounds confusing, we can break it down. Firstly, Lamarckism suggested that organisms could acquire new traits or characteristics during their lifetime as a result of their interactions with the environment. Secondly, 
These acquired traits could then be passed on to an organism's offspring, leading to evolutionary change. Lamarckism focused on the principle of use and disuse, stating that organs or body parts that an organism used extensively would become more developed, while those that were not used would deteriorate over time. Thirdly, Lamarckism believed in a natural progression towards complexity and perfection in organisms over time, basically saying that simpler life forms were destined to transform into better, stronger, and more complicated versions gradually over a long period of time. Unlike some opposing ideas at the time, Lamarckism did not emphasize the occurrence of mass extinctions. Instead, it proposed a continuous and gradual process of transformation. It basically said that extinction was less common than people thought, because organisms could adapt to changing environments through the inheritance of acquired traits. Many school textbooks like to contrast Lamarckism with Charles Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. However, Darwin's book, on the origin of species, gave credence to the idea of heritable effects of use and disuse, as Lamarck had done, and Darwin's own concept of pangenesis similarly implied soft inheritance. As I said before, Lamarckism is no longer accepted. Many researchers from the 1860s and onwards have attempted to find evidence that proves Lamarckian inheritance is real, but these all have been explained away, either by other mechanisms such as genetic contamination or just as fraud. Darwinism. Finally, we get to Darwinism. The idea that all species of organisms arise and develop with a natural selection of small inherited variations that increase the individual's ability to compete, survive, and reproduce. You see, while Lamarckism was the first theory to talk about evolution, our current understanding of genetics destroys that theory, because we know that acquired characteristics such as muscle growth are obviously not inheritable traits. Darwinism's answer states that only characteristics whose information resides in the genes are inherited and that evolution does not depend on environmental changes, but rather on genetic randomness. Although the word mutation usually has a negative connotation, according to Darwinism, mutations are what makes evolution possible. Within this great genetic diversity that exists among us, the environment plays a very important role known as natural selection, which is when the environment selects the best adapted organisms based on the random variation. You might have heard of the phrase, survival of the fittest, without realizing what it actually means in Darwinism. Within a population, individuals with advantageous variations will survive longer, reproduce more, and transmit changes to their offspring as it provides them with a better, more intuitive way to deal with their environment. Conversely, individuals with disadvantageous variations will be less likely to survive and reproduce. In this way, all species are in a continuously gradual change, with a struggle for survival. During the time period where Charles Darwin was writing his famous book, The Origin of Species, he made a five-year trip around the world in which he made numerous observations observations and collected a lot of information that he was able to justify his theory with. Darwinism was not developed solely by Darwin. As other scientists involved reached the same conclusions and contributed research to Darwin that ended up in his book, the acceptance of Darwinism was met with a range of varying reactions when it was first published in 1859. It didn't become accepted overnight, as many religious thinkers of the time struggled to go along with it, worrying that it might conflict with their perspective. Within the scientific community, interest and controversy would take place for several decades before it eventually became almost universally accepted with more studies. Neo-Darwinism Neo-Darwinism is the current theory of evolution, and it unites knowledge from different areas of biology to provide the most up-to-date, scientifically accepted version of Darwinism. It is also called the synthetic theory of evolution, and there are at least five major ideas that it states. First, it rejects all ideas of Lamarckism that points to the inheritance of acquired character traits. Second, it states that in asexual individuals, the only possible source of genetic variability comes from mutations. Individuals that sexually reproduce receive genetic variability from mutations, genetic recombination, and natural selection. Third, natural selection leads to changes in the set of alleles in a population. As a result, the alleles that produce an advantageous phenotype to the individuals will increase their allelic frequency in the population. Fourth, the population evolves, not the individuals, since the result of reproduction is what leads to evolution. And finally, the fifth major idea states that evolution occurs gradually, as Darwin originally argued. Evolution is the result of small changes in allelic frequencies, and for that reason, it takes an extremely long time for a new species to develop. To summarize the current theory of evolution, we could say that today it is known that genetic variability is due to mutations and the process of genetic recombination, and that it is the environment that acts in this genetic variability, triggering evolutionary change in a process known as natural selection.